Hello everyone, this is Damien from Chess Optics here with you again with another video from one of my favorite chess players, Mikhail Tao. When I was first introduced to tactics in chess, Tao became one of my favorite players, man. I mean, he could just explode in a position and then, you know, it just amazed me at how he could find all of these, you know, unique moves and tactical nuances that, you know, would just send his opponents, you know, in a, off the board, you know, just lost. So um, this game is from Tao and it's an opponent who's anonymous. It was in 1963. And Tao has the white pieces playing a Sicilian. This is a short game, it's a miniature. It's only 18 moves, I believe. And um, Tao starts the game off with E4. His opponent plays c5. Tao plays knight to f3. His opponent plays d6. Tao plays d4. His opponent takes the pawn. Knight takes d4. Knight to f6. Knight to c3. a6. Bishop to g5, e6, f4, b5. This is known in um, chess theory as the Polygevsky variation of the Sicilian defense, one of the sharpest. And um, it's a pretty uncompromising uh, option to play against Tao. Um, I mean, there's really nothing to play against Tao. He's, he's amazing. Um, so this game is very interesting because uh, Tao, some, at some point in the game, he sacrificed on e6 and, you know, the opponent went wrong and, you know, what, what can you say? He lost the game. Um, but it's just amazing how, how fast it was. So here we have after b5, we have the move e5. Black plays d takes e5. White takes f takes e5. Black brings the queen to d7. Okay, you may be asking yourself, well, didn't Black just leave his knight here for the pawn to capture? Well, not really. Um, because if you take the pawn, excuse me, if the pawn takes the knight, the queen just comes here to e5 and recaptures the, the bishop. So um, what actually happens here is that white just plays queen to e2. Um, he doesn't even take the knight. He defends the pawn because he wants to keep his bishop, I presume. And the knight goes back because now it really is a threat to capture it. And white castles queenside. Black plays bishop to b7. And here we have the move that makes this game really stand out. Um, the stunning knight takes e6. Oh, uh, well, here. Let's just talk about this for one second. Um, so, this is, of course, uh, a sacrifice, and it's still dangerous today. Um... So we have some options here. The first thing, let's see what happens in the game. Pawn f takes e6. Queen goes to g4. The queen tries to defend the e6 pawn from the attack that white just threatened when he put his queen on g4. And well, that was a mistake, actually, because the rook comes down to d6. Now, the bishop captures the rook. But that doesn't really save black because the queen comes and takes on d6 with check. The king goes to f8. And well, 
What do you think the next move is here? If you just give yourself about 30 seconds, do you think you could find Tao's next move? Okay, I can't wait 30 seconds, but for those of you who just want to follow along, Tao plays the brilliant bishop to c4, opening the rook to the f1 square, and the king will not survive long. Of course, the pawn takes because it's threat of mate on the move here on f7, and um, you see after b takes c4, the move rook to f1 check. The knight comes to f6, blocking the check. The pawn takes the knight. Excuse me. Yes, the pawn takes the knight, sorry. And the bishop comes to h6, and that's checkmate. So let's go back um, a few moves here. So we have um we have some options here around let's say move. Hmm. I want to go back to let's see here. Let's look at after knight f to d7, which is like around move 10 here. Um, so we put the pieces back as such. Queen is here. This is here. Okay. Hope I'm not confusing anyone out there. So from this position, we remember that uh, white castle queen side, correct? Of course. Now the bishop came to b7. So I just wanted to show, for example, um, what would have happened if instead of bishop to b7, if the knight would have taken the e5 pawn, because you see there's two pieces threatening this, right? So let's just say the knight takes e5, right? What happens here, we have knight takes here. And white has a very, very, very strong attack against the queen, if not winning, because we see the threat of this. That would be checkmate. And or he would have to give up his queen. We can't leave the diagonal. So such as if this pawn were to take back, knight comes here, and um, well, where does the white queen go to remain um, out of attack? Would probably be here, but you still come down here, and that's going to give white a significant lead in material. And of course, being as, you know, also, the white, excuse me, the black king would be exposed. This is coming off the board, and he has is behind in development. So, um, pretty much black is at a loss right there, especially playing somebody the caliber of Tao. He's not going to sacrifice a knight on e6 and then, um, you know, there's some sort of major flaw of that nature. So with that, I reset the board, and I hope you have enjoyed this short presentation on my favorite chess player. May your chess be the best. Again, this is Damien from Chess Optics. Please like, subscribe, leave your comments and suggestions for below for things that you may like to see, and for how I can do the channel a little better. Goodbye.